Hello and welcome to Weathersnap. I'm Claire Nazir. And I'm Alex Deakin. It's Thursday, the 9th of March. On this show, we'll be focusing on weather across the UK, which will continue to bring significant impacts to some areas. In a moment, we'll go through the current warnings through Thursday, Friday and into the weekend. But before that, let's backtrack and see how this evolved. The air turned Baltic at the beginning of the week. The winds shift round to a northerly dragging in air from the Arctic. It was an Arctic maritime air mass. Yes, so this Arctic air, it's been pushing steadily southwards, hasn't it? It didn't quite get to the far southwest where I am until probably Tuesday. Uh, And then it's been a battleground, really. That cold air has been in place. We've been well below freezing on many a night this week. But the milder air has been pushing back in from the south. And that is why we've had some snowfall here. So there are a series of weather fronts just flirting with southern England during Tuesday night and into Wednesday. And now they've been pushing further north during Wednesday and particularly today on Thursday. And it's that combination of those weather fronts bringing the moisture, but also bringing the higher temperatures that's provided the snow. Where they meet, where that meets the cold air, that's where we're seeing the significant snowfall. So the snow risk was across northern Scotland, Monday, Tuesday, heavy showers here, and then further south during Tuesday and Wednesday morning. Many places across southern England woke up to a covering of snow and South Wales, and then that's been creeping back further northwards. So today it's more across the Midlands, North Wales, northern England and northern Ireland. That's where the most serious weather is at the moment, at the time of recording. We've both been doing lots of radio and television interviews right the way through the week. And one of the questions which has popped up is it's meteorological spring. It's March. This shouldn't be happening. But just a couple of weeks ago, we acknowledged the fifth anniversary of the Beast from the East. So it does happen at this time of year and the air can remain very, very cold. And certainly we've seen temperatures as low as minus 16 degrees Celsius in the glens of Scotland through Wednesday night and Thursday. So, yes, the air has been very, very cold. And with that, as Alex has just said, we've had a real interaction between milder air trying to push up from the south or southwest and that colder air just sitting over the UK. And the, the nature of cold air is that it's quite dense and it can be rather stubborn. It's hard to shift once it's in place. And certainly that's what we've been seeing. So that was this week. Currently we're on Thursday, Thursday the 9th. There are warnings in force across the country. Let's just talk about the warnings now, Alex, and where they are through the next 48 hours. Well, first thing to say is people can always check the latest warnings on our app and on our website because they're constantly being monitored. uh, So they can change. They do alter. We have a number of yellow warnings in place for snow and ice covering large parts of the UK. Uh, But let's focus in on those amber warnings because we don't issue amber warnings lightly. They're reasonably rare and particularly for snow. They are quite rare. haven't seen too many through this winter period. But we have three in place this Thursday afternoon for Northern Ireland, Northern England and Wales, parts of all of those areas, an amber warning in place, particularly central and eastern parts of Northern Ireland, central and northern parts of Wales. And it's the hills across Northern England from the Peak District to the northernmost parts of the Pennines. Let's deal with them one by one. Northern Ireland, four to eight centimetres of snow, maybe 10 to 20 centimetres on the hills. That is likely to cause some significant disruption. That's from three o'clock into the early hours of Friday morning. Let's deal with the one in Wales, central and northern parts of Wales, heavy snow quite widely in the amber warning area, 10 to 20 centimetres of snow, maybe 30 centimetres on hills. Also in that Wales area, likely to come and go. The wind's bouncing over the Pennines and actually that could cause some extra issues with the gusty winds, but also the potential, particularly in Wales, for icy conditions and the the likelihood of some freezing rain. So the potential for really atrocious driving conditions in parts of Wales. So those gusty winds also increasing the likelihood of accretion of ice on power cables. So power issues are also likely too. And then for northern England in that zone, say from the Peak District up to the, the northernmost part of the Pennines, And this isn't covering all of northern England because actually at low levels, uh, particularly in the east, we're most likely to see rain. And in the west, actually sheltered by the Pennines, uh, there'll be much more patchy snow, but certainly over the hills. But that includes major conurbations like Leeds, Bradford, Sheffield, Harrogate, Huddersfield. There could easily be, again, 10 to 20 centimetres of snow pretty widely and maybe up to 40 centimetres in some locations. I mentioned the winds picking up through Thursday, gusty winds and snow. That means blizzards. So, again, horrible conditions on the roads. That snow is likely to be drifting, could easily cut off uh, rural communities with those kind of drifts of snow as well. 
power issues are likely and uh, yeah, travel disruption, almost certainly airports, rail network. And of course, as I said, some horrific conditions on the roads. So the advice is do not travel there. I mean, it's a main artery going from east to west over the Pennines, the M62, obviously Pennine districts. My mum lives in Sheffield. I want her to come over tomorrow, uh, but certainly she's going to be trying to take a train later on. Who knows whether things will resume normality as that snow retreats back on Friday, but certainly through Thursday night and into Friday. It's really quite dangerous outside to be travelling, particularly over the higher ground. So we've got amber warnings and we've got a broad yellow warning. Mm -hmm. So the amber warnings are kind of ensconced within that broader yellow warning that covers Northern Ireland from the Midlands across North Wales, uh, Central Wales, Northern Ireland, up into southern parts of Scotland. Now, there was risk early in the week that Central Belt could be affected by this, but this low has been waxing and waning a little little bit recent computer model runs have been pushing it a little bit further south and that's why we've now taken the central belt out of that yellow warning but the snow showers will continue in northern scotland so we've got yellow warning for icy conditions here and yeah the wintry weather isn't done there because as the low pulls away and all the snow will ease in northern ireland tonight and then across northern england and wales by tomorrow morning the snow could then push further south into parts of the east of england again and the east midlands and perhaps even uh, East Anglia and the southeast could see some further snow during Friday morning before the whole system pulls away. So, yeah, we're, we're we're not done yet, even when the amber warnings are gone. And then we look out west again as another weather system comes in for the weekend, potentially bringing snow uh, on Saturday across parts of the north. Again, some uncertainty about that and, and exact timing and exactly how much we'll see. But the definite uh, potential for further snow coming in and there is another snow and ice warning from three o'clock on Saturday into Sunday morning across Northern England and Scotland. Right. So there's a lot there. There really is. Uh, certainly on Friday, even when that snow retreats towards East Anglia and clears, there will be some residual uh, snow showers just running in on sort of eastern mm. counties of England. And also there is a feature moving across Scotland. Let's talk about Scotland for a moment, um, Alex, because it's had some absolutely ri ridiculously cold air just sitting over particularly the glens of Scotland, you know, where the air just sinks down to the lowest point and gets increasingly cold. Um, so temperatures have been obviously sub-zero, but sub-zero into sort of 10, minus 10, minus 15 degrees Celsius. And then on Friday, we watch as this feature comes from Shetland, the, the Outer Hebrides, and pushes very slowly southwards towards the mainland. And that's a mix of of snow and also some hail. Yeah, that's another wintry blast. I mean, we've seen quite a lot of snow showers across northern Scotland, fairly robust area to that, but it's definitely going to drop further snow. And of course, wherever we've got snow and those temperatures dropping below freezing, um, we're likely to see icy conditions. And also, um, if you live in the West Country, it's going to be a really windy start to the day with some sort of showers just sort of piling in as well, showery bursts of rain. So quite a lively start to the day down towards the, the southwest, the Irish sea coast with that wind. And that wind transfers eastwards. So a windy spell of weather as well as a wintry one. Yeah, the winds, uh, we talked about the winds in association with the snow across parts of northern England and Wales. So blustery conditions, nothing exceptional, but of course, the combination of snow and winds won't be very pleasant but the, the strongest winds as you mentioned are likely in the southwest and southwest wales as well those winds will pick up overnight uh, and they could be pretty lively they'll be definitely noticeable first thing on friday morning across say pembrokeshire devon cornwall parts of somerset actually that's quite an interesting um point you're making there is that actually in the far south Yes, it has been mild and temperatures are going to recover through the weekend. I mean, you know, we're, we're talking double digits here and, and maybe the mid teens across sort of some sort of points in the far south, whereas in the north, you remain under the colder air. So let's now go into the weekend. So we've spoken about Friday. The end of Friday, apart from central and northern areas of Scotland, could be sort of mostly dry. I mean, there'll be some brighter weather, some sunshine to end the day, but obviously temperatures plummeting very quickly and also the risk of ice. But then all eyes are down towards the southwest yet again. And so this is another feature which is moving in um, through into the weekend. Yeah, Friday looking like a cracking day for parts, you know, parts of Northern Ireland, Southern Scotland. You've got a covering of snow, just beautiful with the blue skies. And then much of the rest of the UK will brighten up during the day. But yeah, the next weather system then coming in off the Atlantic. And 
Yeah, you talked about getting milder. It will get. It is already milder in the south, but Friday will be again colder. So the temperature is going a little bit up and down, with the south again dipping on Friday before rising once more through the weekend as that next system comes in. And of course, that's that's what you need. You need that combination of the cold air, but you also need the moisture to bring significant snow. And it, it's a next weather system coming in from the Atlantic bringing the moisture, hitting the cold air that could provide some significant snow. Again, it's going to be a bit of a mix uh, at some places, Northern Ireland, North Wales in particular. But as it gets into Northern England and Scotland, there could be some snowfall, some significant snowfall again during the latter part of Saturday, Saturday night and into uh, the early hours of Sunday morning. Quite a bit of model uncertainty about the timing of that. And it's more about the intensity, I suspect, with that, because you need the intensity of the of the rain or the precipitation. You need that intensity to bring the snow down to those to those lower levels. So that's something we need to, to keep an eye on. But yeah, the potential for further snow and ice into the weekend across the north and uh, warnings in place for that. That's quite interesting, actually, the the fact that, yes, the temperature doesn't have to be actually zero for the rain to turn to snow. So you'd be driving in your car and your temperature might be around two degrees. If you get that sort of a heavy burst of rain, it can actually add to some cooling, the rain turning a bit sleety, slushy and then to snow. So be warned about that if you are making any journeys through the weekend. So that's the picture on Saturday. Uh, and then it's always a repeat performance on Sunday. It's slightly different. Subtle changes, Alex. Yeah, we're slowly trying to erode this colder air that's in place across the UK. So another weather system comes in. This one doesn't look quite as wintry, but then you have to think about the rainfall that this one's going to bring. You know, heavy rain after a few wet days. That could be an extra issue, something we need to keep a close eye on. But yeah, this one, again, bringing the moisture. And there'll still be some cold air, so there is still the potential on Sunday for snow as you head into Sunday and Monday. And this one could also bring some further strong wind. So plenty to keep us on our toes. What I would say, if you've got plans for the weekend, do keep up to date with the four forecast because it's far from certain uh, where and when we'll see this wet weather and how much snow we will see. So do keep up to date with the forecast. Uh, but yeah, another bout of wet weather likely Sunday night in from the south and then uh, it could be wet and windy for many on Monday. So check your travel plans if you are travelling over the next 60 hours. Mm. Uh, certainly if you're crossing the channel as well towards France. This low pressure system with the high winds tracking across the UK on Thursday into Friday will lead to some significant gusts over northern France for a time through Friday. And that's why Meteor France, the French Met Service, have named this storm as Storm Larissa. It's not been named by the UK or Ireland, but it has been named by France. And that's where we could see some impacts through the latter part of the week and into the weekend and also turning wintry here with the risk of snow. So the low pressure comes in Sunday night and into Monday. That could bring some wet and windy weather. As that then clears, it could open the door to, to northerly winds once more. Another blast of colder air then sinking its way south with further wintry hazards mixed in with that, particularly across the north. So the, the, the northerly winds are, aren't are done with just yet. It will turn milder this weekend in the south, but the colder air may well return. And then for much of next week, it's probably going to be this, this continued battleground with uh, some colder conditions uh, at times and then milder air pushing in from the Atlantic and that battleground. It's not a classic mobility where you just get low pressure after low pressure. There will be these colder interludes in between and wherever you get that clashing of the cold air with the moisture, there is still the potential for further snow. Alex, you're an absolute star and I know you're really busy today, so I'm going to let you go because you've got broadcast after broadcast to do lots of radio interviews as well and there's other stuff going on i mean you're always doing these twitter spaces etc facebook lives um everybody wants a piece of alex deacon today so thanks very much for your time my pleasure claire thank you cheers so winter across the uk has certainly arrived as late as meteorological spring but what was our uk winter like how did it pan out the man with all the numbers dr mark mccarthy i spoke to him earlier February was the fifth mildest February on record for the UK. Uh, it was also notably dry, so less than half the average rainfall for the UK. And for parts of England, drier still. So England overall had less than a quarter of its normal February rainfall this year. Uh, and so this continues uh, a trend of warmer than average conditions for um, sunshine, it was near average for the UK overall for February, um, but that masked a, a split picture really. So parts of England, particularly uh, East Anglia, were sunnier than average, uh, but in the north, Scotland and Northern Ireland um, were rather duller than average. And looking back at the winter 22-23. 
looking back at, at winter overall, because we had uh, a very cold snap at the start of December and milder conditions through February, winter overall has come out close to average, actually slightly milder than average. Uh, the season as a whole was drier than average. Again, there was a notable wet spell from mid-December to mid-January, but the season overall, we only had about 81% of average winter rainfall for the UK. And notably, it was also quite sunny for a, a UK winter. So the third sunniest winter on record uh, for England. Um, so a, a sort of a notable surplus of sunshine during this winter. My thanks to Dr Mark McCarthy. OK, just before we go, here's last week's highs and lows. That's from Monday the 27th of February to Sunday the 5th of March. The warmest place last week was Killowen in County Down. That was last Sunday where we saw a temperature of 11.4 degrees Celsius. Now, Monday saw the lowest min. That was Tullock Bridge in Inverness Shire at minus 8.5 Celsius. The wettest place was Rissalic in Sutherland in the far north of Scotland and picked up eight millimetres of rain. So not a particularly wet week all round, but it was quite bright, quite sunny. Thursday, Odium in Hampshire recorded 9.4 hours of sunshine. So that's all from WeatherSnap this week. Please stay up to date with all the warnings on our website and obviously also on our social media feed. And I'll be back next week. Bye bye for now. WeatherSnap is a podcast by the UK Met Office. For the latest weather conditions where you are, download the Met Office weather app.